You don't know what you're talking about, do you? Sir? I said, you don't know what you're talking about. What time do you go to bed? Sir? You're a bit deaf, aren't you? I said, what time do you go to bed? Oh. Somewhere around 9.30. I'd say around 9.30. That's the way it is. Jack, we're thrilled that you can be on the program. We really appreciate it. Uh, and we couldn't think of a better person to sort of sound off on th this current moment because we, it's, it's really fascinating to watch the differences between these two men. And it's amazing to see the meltdown when Donald Trump goes into a Chick-fil-A. I, I presume you've seen that news. Uh, what do you make of it? Man, don't forget, Benny, I was the one that said Donald Trump is the first black president. And they went crazy. And I'll say it again on your show. Donald J. Trump is the first black president, and that's why these black people reacted the way that they do. And that's why uh, you see people like Jimmy Kimmel, uh, who, who, is, who is clearly fake. I mean, he goes into blackface. But you see someone like Jimmy Kimmel get so mad, man, because the truth and the fact of the matter is he doesn't realize it. But Donald Trump actually gave $10 billion uh, in funding to HBCU. So, yes, he can name a bunch of them. The reason why he can is I personally talked to him about it. And Donald Trump tells me the story over and over again about having all of the black presidents from HBCUs come into his office. And after the third year, he said, guys, why do you come in here every year and have to beg for money? You, you guys are prestigious university presidents. You should not have to beg for money. So you know what he did? He gave them long term funding so that they didn't have to come back each and every year. So that seven billion dollars that Joe Biden is bragging about is just the extension of the Trump funds that he already allocated to HBCU. You see, no one will tell you that because they don't know and the left doesn't want you to hear it. That's the reason why I serve uh, for President Donald J. Trump. And that's the reason I call him the first black president, because he actually passes policies that can uplift black people. He wants black people to have green in their pocket. He wants black uh, men to be back in their homes. He don't he doesn't want a black America that depends on the government uh, and subsidies for everything. He wants people to actually work. And I'll tell you another thing, Benny, you go into one of his hotels or one of his businesses. It's full of black people working from the managers on down. And you ask them because I have and I do. You ask them how they feel about Donald Trump and you hear stories of him paying for weddings and helping to bury uh, people, people who, who who have passed away. You hear about the genuine man of who he is, which is why I will continue to claim that Donald Trump is the first black president. I mean, it's a really powerful statement there. Obviously, you worked with Donald Trump and you work very closely with him. Before we move from this topic to a president that says you're not black for saying right. that, uh, I'd, I'd like to ask, like, what was your experience like working with Donald Trump? He must have really cared about you because he appointed you to this prestigious board. You served on that board, but you probably have some behind the scenes understanding that maybe we don't. Definitely, Benny, I'll tell you. So. I'm one of the only Trump appointees that actually is still in place. I'm still serving on the. Wow. It's, it's actually the Civil Rights Commission, and it's the the Commission on the Social Status of Black Men and Boys. I'll be in D.C. Um, to 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 do an event there in a few weeks. I'm gonna actually invite you because I'm sure the liberal media won't won't ever talk about that still being a Trump appointee and a conservative on this commission. Why? Because I've been the leader on fatherlessness, and our organization, and you know, backed by President Trump, has been a voice. For black men and black people, and no one wants to hear that. And so, yes, and I, I serve that very proudly. But when you start talking about, you know, President Trump and some of the things that he's done, I mean, I I, I talk to Duke Tanner um, usually every week, uh, and I help him. Duke Tanner is a boxer who was 19 and 0 as a professional boxer, black man that literally lobbied. Uh, to the Obama administration for eight years uh, to get him out of prison. He was the first time a drug drug seller. He sold drugs. One time offender. They gave him this man a double life sentence for selling drugs one time. And so Trump comes in and what's he do? He pardons him. Right. 
Same with Lil Wayne and so many others. I wrote and in, 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 in signed off on many of those pardons for these black men that have been appealing the Obama administration for years, man. They would never they would never let them out of, out of prison. And so the First Step Act is something that we're, we're really proud of. Why? Because over 10,000 black men have gotten their sentences reduced because President Donald Trump passed the First Step Act. Listen, we all we all commit crimes. My organization works in prisons and jails all across the United States of America. And and if you don't go in and actually rehabilitate people and you just want to lock them up and throw away the key, that's old school, man. Let's get these dads back in our in the houses. Remember, mm -hmm. Benny, we got 18.6 million fatherless kids in America, the most fatherless nation in the world. That's why you see these young black kids in the streets shooting and killing each other. They don't got daddies in the house, man. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump understands that he wants to get these black men. A lot of these black men have their dads in prison. That's not doing them America uh, any good. The making America great again is getting dads, specifically black black dads, back in the house. That's how we make America great again. And Donald Trump understands that, man. And I have these conversations with him, Benny. I think about one conversation I had um, about five years ago, um, which with, with Donald Trump, I was at his golf course, sitting across from him. He's you know, giving me shirts and, and, and ordering me food, just treating me like family. It, actually, the picture you're showing right now, that that day, I told Donald Trump, I had just got back from Baltimore, man, where I just youth camp. I brought a bunch of black kids in, man, helping these kids and, and just trying to motivate them, man, a lot of fatherless kids. And, and it looked like I was in Haiti or a third world country. Mm -hmm. Everything was boarded up. Trash was everywhere. Uh, it was rats running around. This is in Baltimore, Maryland. And I came back and I said, President Trump, we got to do something with Baltimore. I said, it is ridiculous to see an American city that's been a great American city look like a third world country. The next day, he comes out and makes that statement about Baltimore and says we need to clean this city up about the rats and the roaches. And the reason he did that is because I told him about it. He cared. He wanted to do something else. So he starts calling out these liberal politicians that have been leading this, this city for 60, 70 years. It's been on the Democratic leadership. And, and these places look like we're going to a third world country. And so people get mad. But that's why he's resonating with black people, because black people want to know the truth. We're tired of, of being poor. Black people are tired of not having enough money to take care of their families and not being able to uh, go after the American dream because we have liberal politicians in these cities just weighing it down and robbing them of everything, man. Yeah. I mean, listen, we I lived in Washington, D.C. for 15 years. We were in Baltimore often. And you you you're right. I mean, it's it, it's saying third world country about Baltimore is, is an insult to third world countries. I've been to third world countries that are much cleaner Right. And much better run than than Baltimore. Uh, it is interesting as you talk about the first step back and as you talk about Donald Trump's uh, heart for this, because you can see where Joe Biden's heart for this is. And when Donald Trump was at that that Chick-fil-A stop, some of the people there were like, you got to check Joe Biden's record in the 90s. If you check Joe Biden's record in the 90s, here, here's here's the New York Times. Lock that SOB up. Joe Biden in the era of mass incarceration. Then talks about how Joe Biden was the number one proponent of mass incarceration, gave all these speeches on the floor, bragging about how he's going to lock people up for anything, for, for any, if you are caught with a, what does he say? He holds up a nickel and he says, if you're right. caught with a nickel of crack, you're going to prison. Judge doesn't have a choice. Five years in jail at least. Yet at the exact same time, because we know this because we've read the autobiography, he was muscling his kid out of prison again and again and again. His white son never went to prison and has yet to see a jail cell for all of his crimes. And some of those crimes include mountains of crack rocks on video. Don't know why the guys had a GoPro strapped to him all the time, but who know, we, Who knows, right? Hell of a drug. Uh, what does that say to you that Hunter Biden has never been in jail for crack? It angers me, man. Um, and I get emotional even when I start thinking about this being, to be honest with you, man. When I, when I was eight years old, man, I had to drive up. Uh, to see my cousins locked up from selling crack cocaine, man. Mm -hmm. that, and that's why that's what fuels my passion of going to the prison. I'd have to go up and see my big cousins, man. One of my cousins did 31 years. The other one did 26 years in prison um, for selling crack. And so but I, I saw them, man, and they didn't have dads in the house, man. And and, and they didn't have, um, you know, the, they didn't have the resources 
uh, to, to you know, they were very young. I mean, they, were, they started selling dope when they were 14, 15 years old. You know what I mean? And so they lived their life in prison, man. And it was because of this exact bill, man, the 1994 crime bill that just slaughtered, decimated the black community. Why? Because it treated black folks different than it treated white folks. If you got caught with the same amount of, of powder cocaine, you didn't do you didn't do any of the time. But if you got caught with crack, you you were just pulling the black men out of the house, man. And you put that on top of the welfare system that they they put into place. Uh, Joe Biden is a sick man, man. I, I, I pray for his soul. You know, you know, the, the Bible says um, vengeance is mine, says the Lord, man. And, and the wrath of God is going to be on this man if he don't do something different. I mean, Benny, you talk about his son over and over again committing crimes that my family members or myself, man, I'd be they'd lock me up in a second if I did anything like, like yes. this man has done. You know what I'm saying? And then another thing, too, you look at what he's doing at the border, these atrocities, man. I just got back from Haiti last night. Man, he's letting these people just flood the border, not just Haitians, everyone, Venezuelans, I mean, criminals, you know how many gangsters? We just caught a gangster uh, three days ago in, in, in Haiti, one of the gang members. I almost got to the, to the United States of America. These guys that are killing people, man, but he's letting all of these people come into the, the, the country illegally, but he's locking every black man up that he can. I mean, it's um, it taxpaying black men, fathers in America. Man, this is this is real, man. The stuff you're covering, Benny, um, is real, man. We we're in some trying times, man. Joe Biden is a sick, sick human being, man. He's a sick. He's a sick human being, and it's what what particularly insulting, I suppose, for the people who live here, uh, is that it seems like there's a there's a act there there's a there it's not doesn't seem like it. he's literally reducing the electoral power right. of the Americans who live here. Right. So, so you're reducing, you're demographically changing the country forever. And, and, and it's not me saying that, by the way, it's, it's everyone in South side of Chicago. Right. Every time there's a microphone in the face of anyone in South side of Chicago, from local news to Fox news to corporate news, they say you are reducing our electoral power. You are eliminating us. You are replacing our, us as an electorate. Right. And that that seems to correlate shockingly with Donald Trump's spike in approval ratings uh, of black voters. He's doubled for black men and women. Uh, is that what's behind it? No doubt. Uh, black black folks are waking up. Um, you know, it's it's tough. You know, you think about it, even with this OJ situation. I remember back when, you know, we were cheering when OJ got let off. You know, we you know, we we, we, we watched Rodney King get beat in the streets. And so, you know, for black people, man, we, we, we have been through a lot in this country, man. No one can deny that. And, and, and so for people of my age demographic that have watched and seen this, um, you know, I think it's unique. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm 45 years old. So people now like the stuff that's going on with all of the, the pushing of the transgender and then going after our kids and the school system. Now, for us to be watching what's happening at the hands of liberals, it's just really eye opening. And that's why you see it, saw, seen it take so long for a lot of people uh, to be to, to wake up to this is because we've gone through so much for so long uh, and we were trained and taught as 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 kids that Republicans were the reason for 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 all of our issues and and black folks are starting to realize that that's just been this big lie right mm -hmm. and I think Donald Trump is the one that has exposed exposed this and you and you see people coming out uh, in droves to support him I mean listen man I was ridiculed for coming out in support of Donald Trump I mean literally my family they were they were threats and attacks and people coming after me and now all of a sudden it's like Everywhere I look, like all my friends now are voting for Trump and all of my boys <laughs> are voting for Trump. Benny, I'm telling you, one day I'm going to take real. you. For real. For real. One day, Benny, I'm going to take you in. You got to come to a prison with me, man. I'm going to take you in a prison and let you see all of these guys inside the prison. All of them go. All of them are Trump supporters. Wow. And, and it's un, I mean, it's unbelievable when you start to see the like the most voiceless, man. It tells you a lot when the most voiceless are supporting uh, a, a president, especially like Donald Trump, that's a Republican. You've never seen this before. And the reason why is because people are seeing the results of these liberal leftist policies. Before, you didn't understand it. I didn't understand it. I didn't understand how welfare, right, could lead to fatherlessness, right? I didn't mm -hmm. understand how, you know, letting the border be flooded could lead mm -hmm. to black 
black unemployment and could lead yes. for less opportunities for blacks and, and could lead to criminal justice uh, inequalities and inequities. You, I didn't I didn't put those things together before. And now because of Donald Trump. We're able to talk about it. Right. Social media and shows like this, they can't hide from it because no one can tell me I don't know what I'm doing or what I'm talking about. I'm in the prisons every week. I'm in the streets every week. I got kids that are that that, that live in, in two bedroom apartments and it's 15 of them in there that I got to feed every week. I, I No one can tell me about any of these issues because my organization is touching it. And so this is why they are going to have to deal with this movement. And it's going to become a day in this November. They are literally going to have to put their money where their mouth is because the American people are going to speak. Because I'm telling you right now, I'm going on a rampage this electorate. I will talk and speak anywhere to help stop this madness. I believe God, this is God ordains time for people to speak truth. And we have to stop letting them separate us with skin color, man. We are brothers and this this country was built on us being brothers and sisters and uniting us, the United States of America. It was a dream and this dream will be fulfilled, man. And I think this is the most important election in this nation's history. Uh, and I hope the black man feels and runs to the polls uh, to, to stand up for our people and for our kids and our, for our future generations. Uh, I think you should just clip just take that speech, just clip it. Speaking <laughs> of the Trump campaign right now. Okay, Trump campaign. You just take the speech right there. We just did it. We just did it for you. Okay. Don't even don't need to hire a writer. Don't gotta hire an actor. Just put the speech up on TV. That's it. That's all you need. Clip it, put it up. There's your there's your 30 second, your one minute, your 90 second ad. Right Man. there. Jack Brewer, we put up the link to your uh, to your, your foundation here. If you wish to obviously go to the Jack Brewer Foundation, we encourage you to do so. Jack is doing such remarkable work. We did want to leave you with one opportunity to comment on somebody um, who clearly doesn't care about skin color, Mr. Jimmy Kimmel, who did an entire – he had an entire ongoing skit. Uh, of an uh, making fun of an athlete, you are an athlete. Uh, making fun of Carl Malone wearing full blackface and black body, actually, uh, I, I suppose would be the right term for this. Yet he's the one saying that Donald Trump's offensive to black people. Your comment? Unbelievable. First off, Carl Malone is a patriot, right? Carl Malone is a great man, man of God. You ain't never heard nothing negative about Carl Malone. And so to see this, I mean, listen, if 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 a Republican did this. If one of Donald Trump's kids did this, if anyone on the left did this, they would be slaughtered. Right. They would murder their name. They would they they would continue uh, continually annihilate them. They never be able to stop talking about it. And for the fact that the leftist media, this is the first time I ever seen this clip. That's sad. That tells you right there exposes their bias. Anybody watching it shows you exactly who these people are for this not to be. Uh, front and center, no matter who you're talking about, anybody on the right, this would have ended their career. There's no way that ABC, NBC, any of these networks, CBS, any of these networks would ever hire a person who did this if they were on the right. Right. The view would be all over this. You've never seen this clip on the view. Whoopi Goldberg would be losing her mind if this was anybody on the right. It's it's ridiculous. These people are hypocrites. The Bible talks about them, man. They, their day's coming, man. It's funny you bring up the view because Joy Behar also did blackface and admitted it, and yeah. she gets a pass as well. It's unbelievable, man. <laughs> she, she said it. it. Not me. She's the one who's like, I darkened my skin to be a beautiful African princess, she says, and she hold, puts up the photo. And yeah. Whoopi Goldberg's like, you did what? <laughs> Again, that's a, that it, the double. Sta if there wasn't weren't double standards, there'd be no standards at all. I just find it particularly rich that Jimmy Kimmel accuses Donald Trump of trying to be a black person when Jimmy Kimmel literally has. Here's the Joy Behar blackface. Oh. When Jimmy Kimmel, not a, not a, yeah, like all right, but, great, but hold great. On, hold on, hold on, what ain't Benny? I mean, the <laughs> legs. though. I've never seen the legs. I mean, come on, the, the Jimmy arms, Kimmel legs. I mean, what? How did he even do it? Like, what did he use? I mean, it's unbelievable. Think about the mockery this guy. He had to be laughing and cracking up inside. This exposes exactly who he is. His hands are blacker as mine. He's blacker than me on there, man. Unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it before in all of my life, man. They would have, anybody on the right, they would have already slaughtered him. The fact that this man has a show that they're pumping millions of dollars, I'm telling what this man makes still and he's never he, he he's never had to pay for any of this ah exposes them and they're hypocrites
That's right. Hundreds of millions. I mean, the way th- these network shows, I mean, they're, they're millions of dollars per episode. So yeah, it's it, that that's what they're investing in. Uh, but you should invest in Jack, his foundation. You should follow him on social media uh, for somebody who actually legitimately is trying to save this country and legitimately doing an uh, awesome work. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, Jack Vinny, Brewer. Vinny, before I go, I yeah, just want to say, man, we've we've been we just got back from Haiti, brother. Uh, literally yeah. last night, man. We've oh, wow. We've, Took over 150 Americans out of there, man. We evacuated them. The government wasn't doing nothing for them. I mean, kids. I mean, the stories, people people getting kidnapped, right? Babies getting murdered, man, in cold blood. Uh, and it's Americans over there, man. And, you know, if this was Ukraine or Israel or something that was that they could make a political statement about, the left would have already pulled them out. Um, but, no, they didn't do it. And so we literally had to go there, man. I've been there for three weeks and. Uh, it's been crazy. I mean, coordinating aircraft and sending people in and sending armored cars in to get orphans. Um, and, and we got a hundred, 150 Americans out over 260 people total. Uh, we pulled out of there, man. So I just wanted to say that, man, because, you know, sometimes these things are out of the news cycle and you don't hear about it, man. But uh, we got to keep man, one America, brother, man. We, yeah. we call it Team America, man. We, we, if we all work together, man, we can make this nation great again, brother. I believe it. I'm going to fight for it to the death, man. God bless you, bro. Get on the campaign trail with Trump. I mean, this is, this has been, uh, this has been remarkable to hear from you. And, 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 and what a, what a testament that the government can't do this. Yeah. Government can't do this. Can't, government can't go save Americans anymore. Weak men, hard times. Strong men, good times. Ladies right. and gentlemen, that's all you need to know for 2024. Amen. Jack Brewer, Godspeed. God bless you, Benny.